Today, I'm going to show you how to make some cool cloth simulations using Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine 5. So we're going to start in Cinema 4D and I'm going to begin the tutorial by hold clicking on our object creation manager and we're going to add a plain object. So from here, we can just drop that in and I like to set it to the negative Z orientation and the reason why is it faces our world where we want it to be. You can make this anything you want. Now, because of the new GPU accelerated tools in Cinema 4D, we can add a ton of subdivisions to this and it will look super detailed and still be really, really fast. So we'll set the width and height to 100. Cool. So now there's a lot of subdivisions. I'm going to hit N c on my keyboard to get rid of my polygon count view whatever that's called and now i need to go to my project settings so in my project settings i'll hit Control d and i'll set my fps i like working with 24 frames but you can do anything you want next we'll go to our simulation and the gravity is set to negative 981 by default but for the stylization of this tutorial i'm going to set this to zero now make sure that your gpu is enabled by it being highlighted and that means it'll run really really fast if you do have to run on the cpu just because you don't have the best processor this will run slower just be aware of that so with that done you could also navigate to your simulation settings most of these defaults are good to get you started but if you need to increase the detail feel free to adjust the smoothing iterations or the sub steps but we'll talk about that in another tutorial now what I want to do is actually make our cloth. So we're going to right click on our plane, go to simulations and cloth. So now we have the cloth tab and if we were to play this back, nothing's going to happen. So that's because we don't have any forces acting upon our object right now. So we have to go to simulate at the very top, forces and turbulence. Now if I play this back, not much is going to happen on the surface, but if I hit NB on my keyboard and I play this back, we can see a very subtle movement as we scrub through our timeline. And that's because the turbulence scale is really, really small. So if we crank this up just a little bit, and after we update the turbulence scale, we get a very cool, beautiful looking cloth animation. Now I wanna show you how I did the example of this tutorial. So with this, I'm going to hit Control S to save. And then I'm gonna go up to my simulate tab and add a rotation. And what that's going to do is that's going to add a rotational force. And hey, that's cool, but we want it to affect just the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the beginning of our timeline and we're going to go to our rotation force and add a field. Instead of a linear field, we'll hold click and navigate to a spherical field. So now if I play this back, we can see something's happening cranking up the rotation just in the center and that's kind of what we want so now what i want to do is i want to increase the rotation effect by bringing up the angle speed maybe to like 70 or 80 somewhere around there and then i want to go to my spherical field and then go to remapping now i want this to be the most prominent in the center and then fall off as it gets further away so i'll just bring my inner offset in and then i want to go to my spherical field hit T on my keyboard and scale it down just a little bit. Cool. All right, so let's play that back. And it's doing a little bit of rotation. It's kind of hard to see there. And what I'm going to do to just really amplify this is I'm just going to crank up that rotation to like maybe 200 and play that back. Cool. All right. So that's getting closer to what we want. I'm going to fuss with this for one more second, and then I'll show you the final result. So after just a couple minutes, I started playing with the cloth. And what I did is I added a keyframe at the very beginning and set the angle speed rotation to 500. And then I animated that down to a value of 20 at frame 138. So now the final animation looks like this. And I'd say that looks pretty cool. So now what I want to do is get this more refined. It, we could see that it's a little chunky in the center here. So what I'm first going to do is hit Control D on my keyboard and navigate to my smoothing iterations. I'm going to set this to two. 
and that's going to increase the fidelity of the animation just a little bit. Check out EJ Hassenfrat's tutorial and 3D Motion Show presentation all about the cloth. He has a much more in-depth explanation about all of this. Now, what I do want to do is add a little bit more subdivisions to this so it does have a little bit more detail. So instead of adding subdivisions to the plane, though, I'm going to navigate to my generator tab and I'm going to hold click and then hold alt on my keyboard and put the plane under a cloth surface. And that's going to add even more subdivisions to our object. And for the sake of this tutorial, I think that looks pretty good. So now what I want to do is add a camera to my scene. I will click on the camera icon and then click on the view through camera and I'll click on the coordinates of that camera, set the X to zero, set the Y to zero, set the rotation values to be all zero. So we're looking at our object straight on. Sweet. All right. So now what I have to do is save my project and get it ready for Unreal Engine. So one thing I do need to mention here is that we're working with something called an Alembic file. An Alembic file is basically trying to save a geometry cache. It's saving all of the geometry movement within a single file. I will warn you that these files can get very, very large. So depending on how long your animation is, you might have a very large file at the end of it. So just be aware of that. So what we're going to do is go to file and export and find Alembic A, B, C. A window will pop up with the ABC settings and there's one thing you do have to be aware of and that is you want to start your start frame animation on frame one. Don't ask me why. 3D software is just buggy and weird sometimes like that. So just make sure you do that. Click OK. We're going to navigate to where we want this to save. So I'm going to put this in an element folder. Call this ABC and we will save that there. Now it's going to take just a little bit. You can see in the lower right hand corner of your Cinema 4D file that it is saving. So I'm going to let it do that. And then we're going to open up Unreal Engine 5. So with Unreal Engine 5 open now, we can start importing the cloth that we just made in Cinema 4D. Now, if you are using a different 3D suite like Blender or Maya, you can still use a lot of the same tools. I don't know what the cloth is like in their systems, but you still would export an Olympic file. So let's import that Olympic now. We can right click on our content browser and go to new folder. We'll call this ABC for Olympic and we will double click that. And then we're going to navigate to where we just saved our new Olympic file. We can see that the size of this is 565 megabytes. 500,000 kilobytes for 240 frames of animation. So the more detail you add to your animation, the longer it's going to take. Just be aware of that. We're going to click and drag this over into our content browser on Unreal Engine, and it's going to ask us a window for the Olympic options. The import type is very important. So make sure the frames start at zero, different from Cinema 4D. We want the C4D to start at one, but this one is at zero. And then the geometry cache we want to make sure that is enabled. Everything else we can leave at default. We'll click on import and it's going to take a second to import because the file is so big, but just give it a second. 2000 years later. And now our file is in Unreal Engine. So we can see it here. And if we first select on our main level and just delete the floor, we don't need that because we want the cloth. Now I'm going to zero out all of the location data. I want this to be at zero, zero. And what I want to do is rotate it on the axis I want it to be. So there is fine. Now we need to be able to play this back. So the first thing we're going to do now is right click on our main content folder and make a new folder call this sequences. And within that, we'll right click animation level sequence. We'll call this cloth sim play, whatever you want. Double click on that. Now we can go to our cloth tutorial object and drag this in. And then there's one more thing we need to add, and that is a geometry cache. So on this object, we can hit geometry cache. And if we play that back, hey, look, there's some cool cloth. Now I'm going to make sure I have my settings match from Cinema 4D. I know I did that in 24 frames per second, so I'm just going to set that to 24 frames. And then I'm going to drag out my 
endpoint to the end of that animation. Now, we could import the Cinema 4D camera, but that's a whole separate tutorial. What we're instead going to do is just click on the hamburger lines up here, click on create camera here, Cine camera actor. We're going to drag this into our level sequencer. It's in our outliner now, and we can see it creates a camera cut track. And then with our camera actor, let's just zero out our Y and Z settings, and then all of our rotation data so that we're looking straight on again. Now the default of the camera actor is to look at things with an 11.88 millimeter focal length, but that doesn't look good. We're going to set this to, let's say, a 50. And now we can see it's a little blurry. That's because the depth of field is not focused where we want it to be. So we'll go to our focus settings of our camera, hit the eyedropper, and click on our viewport. And for some reason, it's not working. So we can just change our value to see that. And now if we play that back, how cool. Now the 50 is probably a little bit too punched in. So instead, I'm going to set this to maybe like a 24 millimeter. And that looks pretty solid. Now we need to add a material to this. So I'm going to right click and add a new folder and we'll call this materials. And you can find any material that you want. If you have assets that you've already used before, use those. I'm going to use something from Grayscale Gorilla. I just like their stuff. I am not sponsored by them, but hey, they make really cool presets and such. So I'm going to find a nice texture from Grayscale Gorilla and import that right now and one of the textures that i've been really playing with as of late is a nice leather so i'm going to import a let's just say a mint leather we'll find all of these drag these in and i'm going to make this material really quick so we're going to right click and add a material and we'll call this mint leather Ooh. double click on that and with these material objects that we just dragged into our scene, we can put them into our node editor. Now this gray one right here is the roughness, so we'll plug that in. This non-default color is just uh, our color, base color. And then the blue-ish one is gonna be our normal. So we'll pipe that in, and then we can hit save. Once your material is saved, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this material on top of our object. And hey, look, now we have a cool looking material on our cloth. And if we click on our sequencer, we can play that back. And I'd say that looks pretty legit. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to touch up the lighting just a little bit. So the default lighting in Unreal Engine 5 is okay but we're going to tighten it up just a little bit more by deleting everything in fact we're going to click on the light source and the atmospheric fog and the skylight and the sky sphere and just get rid of all of it we don't need it and after we delete everything we're going to go to our window and environment light mixer this window will pop up and this is a super powerful tool where you can click on a skylight then we can add an atmospheric light then we can add a sky atmosphere volumetric cloud create height fog and it gives us the base of what we need for lighting an outdoor scene in Unreal Engine. Now what we want to do is go to our place actors panel and if you don't have that you can click on this little cube plus sign here and see the place actors panel right here and we're going to search here for a post process volume. We're going to drag this in, we're going to type in the search bar in the details panel of the post process volume UNB. We want to make sure that this envelops the entire scene. It's just a, a thing that you have to do. We're going to go to our exposure, metering mode, set this to basic. Exposure compensation is going to be enabled. The min and max, we want to set these to one. So now we can see that the lighting's changed. It's basically trying to give us auto exposure, but we don't want that. We're artists. We want to control those things. So now we can click on our directional light. And if we hit control L on our keyboard, with our uh, viewport selected, we can start moving our light to try and get some shadows that we think look interesting and cool and fun. I'd say that looks pretty cool. Now it is looking really dark in some spots. What we can do is we can go to our directional light and we can go to our indirect lighting intensity and crank that up a little bit. But there's also another thing we have to make sure we do. We have to go to our post-process volume 
and we have to click on global illumination and I like using ray tracing. So I'll click on that and hey, look, a lot of those shadows are getting filled in right away. Go to our type. Right now it's disabled actually. Go to brute force. And hey, look, there's some GI enveloping our scene. And we can see it's a little noisy here. So if we set this to like, let's say 16, it's gonna clear up right there for our samples at the moment. And that looks real nice in my opinion. Now, the last thing I want to do is add a plane object to this, and that's just going to create our background. So we'll just add a plane from the shapes of the plane, place actors panel, and we will zero it out, and we're going to instead rotate it towards us. So we'll hit E in our keyboard, rotate this down, but if we click on the right axis, set the rotation to be 90, and then what we're going to do is scale it up to like, what, 500? And then I'm going to push it back in Z space. That way. Okay, cool. Now I do realize I did move my camera, so I'll just go ahead and reset that again. And then, nope, there we go, right there. And then with my post process volume, I can go in and touch up any other final details. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how harsh these shadows are, so instead, I'm going to go to my source angle and source soft angle and crank these values up by a lot. Let's say 20, 50. Yeah, sweet. And then I'll go to my plane and just push that back even further so we don't get that shadow on. We can adjust our lighting a little bit by hitting Control L and just moving our light around just a little bit so it looks a little bit more pleasing to whatever we want. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Now let's render this out. We're gonna do a simple render here. If you wanna learn more about render settings in Unreal Engine, check out this tutorial. I go more into some of the intricacies of what you would need to do a more advanced render in Unreal Engine, but right now we're just gonna keep it simple. We'll go to our cloth sim play. We'll go to our config output. Just keep all these settings basic and the same. Pre-renders. Play zero one. Double click that. Select folder. Accept. And make sure we save our project before we hit the render button because sometimes it can be unstable. Hit the render button. Your thing will load up on your respective monitor. And that looks pretty cool. And it's rendering super fast. So I recorded this tutorial in about 24 minutes. You can do some cool stuff with Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine 5, and I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. Hit me up on Instagram at John Jagsney, and I will leave you with the usual final tip, and that is eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some Goodbye, my friends. Bye.